you guys. So it is officially the middle of August and somehow this is the second Sephora VIB related video that I'm making. Um, oddly enough, I had already sat down to write all my notes and get my thoughts together on this. And then a bunch of you guys were messaging me and commenting that you wanted me to make a video about this. And I'm happy to do it. Very, very happy to do it. Before we get started, make sure you are subscribed. If you are not, check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. If you're new here, hi, what's up? My name is Whitney. My channel is all about beauty budgets, consumerism, using up the collection we already have, unpacking messages that we're getting from the beauty community and the beauty industry as a whole, and figuring out what, if anything, we can learn from them. If you're not new, hey, what's up? How you mama now? With all that being said, let's just get started. So I have five things I wanna tell you guys about the Sephora VIB sale. And number one is that these things happen a lot. I swear, I might've said this in my last video about the Sephora VIB sale. You might've corrected me, I don't remember anymore. But I swear, these things only used to happen once a year and I feel like they were usually around the beginning of November slash the end of October and that was all she wrote. Now, I feel like they're happening about three times a year. Yeah, cause one already happened in April. Then we got this one and there will be another one coming around. But I'm willing to bet anything. There's also gonna be one in December too, so look out for that. But I bring all this up to simply say that this will happen again. Sales are great. And obviously if you have the opportunity to get something on sale versus pay full price, then always go for the on sale. But do not buy things just because they are on sale. Don't blow your load in August because you'll have another opportunity to go shopping here in a couple of months if that's really what you're holding out for is the VIB sale. And I'm willing to bet anything that they're having the sale right now is because they need to get rid of all the summer stock to make room for the new fall and winter collections that are coming around and in my opinion, Fall and winter are the funnest times to get into makeup and buy makeup. All the cool stuff seems to come out around that time. So keep that in mind. But for the sake of argument, if you insist on shopping both sales, this one and the one coming up, I would imagine you would benefit greatly from being tactical about it and using one sale for one thing and one sale for the other. Maybe this sale, you could go ahead and stock up on the necessities that you love from Sephora that you already know you're gonna have to buy again. So shampoos, conditioners, mascaras, concealers, foundations, primers, the things that you're going for over and over and over again. And then maybe if you still wanna shop the sale again in October, November, then take that opportunity to maybe try some new things. That's just my suggestion. That way the 20% off is definitely being used towards things that you're gonna use because I can tell you for me personally in the past, I would talk myself into buying all kinds of things that let me tell you, I still have and have only used a handful of times. If you take the opportunity for this sale to go ahead and stock up, or actually it doesn't matter which sale you do it, like I said, but if you use one of these sales during the year with Sephora and the VIB to take advantage of that 20% and buy things you're already gonna buy anyway, I think that's a pretty good strategy. And then maybe once in a while use a Sephora VIB sale to try some new stuff. Just the fun things that you otherwise probably didn't wanna spend full price on. Number two, 20% off isn't nothing, but it's not like earth shatteringly good savings either. As I said in the beginning of the video, I did a Sephora VIB sale for the April sale, the mail one, I don't know. I can't even, I can't even keep it straight anymore. But in that video, I made it a point to say that 20% off time might be a good time to focus your money on one big ticket purchase item instead of a bunch of little things. And the main reason that I said that is because from my experience, whenever I have gone to Sephora and taken that 20% off opportunity, I would buy all kinds of stuff, new foundations, new lipsticks, new highlighters, new bronzers. And then when I actually looked at my receipt to see the savings, the savings usually amounted to around, I don't know, 60 bucks, which in essence meant I got one thing that I bought for free. If you think that spending $300 so you can get one of those items for free is a good way to spend your money, then by all means knock yourself out. For me, if I was gonna take advantage of the 20% off sale now, I would most likely use it to buy something that I've had my eye on for a long time that's more on the expensive side. So this for me, for example, would be the new face. I have had my eye on that thing all year. I keep thinking about taking the plunge and then I chicken out, but the reason that this would be an ideal purchase for for me is A, 
it's a device. So it's not one of those things that when I purchase it with the 20% off, the next time I need to re up on it, I'm gonna have to pay full price. It's something that I'll use for a really, really long time. And 20% off of it is gonna be about $65. You know, it wouldn't be enough off to justify purchasing that thing if I wanted to get it just cause it's on sale. But like I said, it's something I have wanted for a while. So that would be the perfect VIB purchase for me. Other things at Sephora that are similar to that, that would be a good opportunity to take advantage of the 20% off are curling irons, blow dryers. They have a lot of facial devices now. I've been really into facial rolling for a while. They have tons of those brushes, things like that stuff that you're really going to get a lot of use out of for a long time. Therefore that 20% is really working for you and not just contributing to more clutter and more stuff that you're never going to make a dent in because you already have enough makeup. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But either way, like I said, if you don't buy the device or whatever the case may be this time, there's another one coming around. There's always another Sephora sale coming. Number three, Beware the top dollar trap. So this is mostly brands like YSL. I don't even know if you could quantify even YSL and Dior as being on par with like a Pat McGrath or a Natasha Denona in terms of price point. But these are the brands I'm talking about, the really expensive ones, ones that are almost infamous in the beauty community simply because they're so expensive. Make sure you guys check out Nappy Headed Jojoba. Um, she has a video about this. I will link it down below. It's hilarious. She's super articulate. I friggin' love her. Go show her some love too. But this is an area where I feel like a lot of people are gonna try to throw that 20%. And while I did say it is a good idea to invest your 20% into one big ticket item, if that's what you decide to do, I don't know that this is the way to go and hear me out simply because I'm going to say it in almost video, every single video. I know I am at this point. Makeup expires. If you do not have a lot of makeup, okay, and you want to invest in a $200 Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette because you know you're going to use it all the time and the word on the street is those palettes have a crap ton of product in it. Fine. But if you already have 34 eyeshadow palettes that you're not making a dent in. You're gonna do the same exact thing with this palette. I don't care how much it costs. Like you're gonna use it for a while and then another sale is gonna come around and then you're gonna buy another one. So I think this would depend so much on your existing collection. You can usually get around two plus years out of a powder product. So in this instance, I would say like, if you're gonna invest in Pat McGrath, the eyeshadows would be a better bet than the lipsticks cause they're just not gonna have the shelf life quite as long. But the thing with luxury brands is like, they're beautiful. The packaging is amazing. They're so nice. I, I get why people want to invest in them. And that's all well and fine um, if you can afford it. I mean, there are products from higher end brands like Charlotte Tilbury that I will repurchase forever and ever. I'm looking at you magic cream because I just love them and I don't care if it's on sale or not. But I do think there's some questions you need to ask yourself before you buy stuff like this. I think the first question you need to ask yourself is, do I have a million things just like this? If you already have a lot of this particular thing, sake of argument, eyeshadow palette with these exact same colors. Don't kid yourself into thinking you're just gonna fall in love with this color story a million times more now that you pay $240 for the eyeshadow palette. Number two, you should ask yourself if you're gonna be entirely too precious about using this because it's so expensive. That's something that I used to do a lot. For example, this is my La Mer foundation. I've had this bottle for about a year now and it's lasted me so long because sometimes I can be very stingy about using it because it's so expensive, but what is the point in having it if I'm not gonna use it? Cause this is gonna go bad eventually. And it's honestly one of my favorite foundations. I don't care what anybody says, I love this stuff. But that's kind of something you need to consider. Are you gonna invest all this money in something that you're gonna treat like a relic that cannot be touched by the hands of time? You gotta consider that kind of stuff. And then the third thing you should probably ask yourself, is this something I am normally drawn to at all? In other words, if you're looking at the Pat McGrath lipsticks and you're getting really excited about those reds and those gorgeous vivid, oh God, those lipsticks. I can kind of understand it. But the thing is, if you do not wear red lipstick, don't assume you're gonna start because you paid top dollar for one. It's a really good thing to keep in mind. The sale is great, like I said, but something being on sale is not a good reason to buy it. Number four, this is gonna be divisive. Um, beware of the skincare section. I used to buy a lot of Sephora skincare. I should say actually a, a lot of skincare in general. I've had problem skin off and on for about five years and I do plan on doing a video talking about the crazy things I have learned in this time because 
the solution to my problem skin that I have found might surprise you. Stay tuned. But here's the thing. I never really had an experience with Sephora skincare where it solved any of my skincare problems. That's not to say that there are zero Sephora skincare things that I like. I mean, I really love masks. I think masks are a great thing to invest in if you're gonna do it this way, because in my opinion, a good mask will like boost your makeup appearance when you're about to apply it. I will leave a skin prep video down below to illustrate what I mean by that. But I love I love Glam Glow masks. I love the Laneige, Laneige, whatever, sleeping mask. Ula Henriksen has a makeup remover that I'm obsessed with. Like, it's not that there's nothing there there that I enjoy in terms of Sephora skincare. But once again, none, nothing I've ever bought from Sephora ever changed my skin. There's so much skincare out there on the market, particularly in places like Sephora, that rely almost completely on buzzwords to get your money. So in some cases that could be clean beauty. And for the majority of this year, we have seen a lot of CBD beauty out there. But here's the thing, like due to the molecular structure of those particular products, they are unable to penetrate penetrate deeply enough into your dermis to change a whole lot of anything. Any results you get are superficial and superficial in this sense means it's just what you can see. So you might have the appearance of smaller pores or you might have the appearance of clearer skin or lighter dark spots, but the second you stop using that product, your problem's gonna come back because it didn't actually change anything. <laughs> This is very much so gonna depend on what your skincare concerns are, but brands like Sunday Riley and Drunk Elephant, I actually, I, I have tried some Drunk Elephant stuff that I do like, but overall, you know, $90 price tags for things like that just seem a little bananas to me, honestly. It might help a little bit, but if 2019 has taught me anything, it's that take all this money you're throwing at Sephora skincare. Once again, if you're having a problem, if you're just trying to like maintain your existing gorgeous skin, you're probably fine. But if you're having an active problem like I had, I had acne for such a long time and I was spending so much money on skincare, which I should have been doing with that money is going to either get professional help or investing it into medical grade skincare. And there are medical grade skincare brands out there like Osmosis and Sanitas that are amazing quality and they're on par with, if not a little bit cheaper, with some of the Sephora brands that you'll come in contact with during the sale. Good skincare ultimately comes down to the concentration of active ingredients. And then if those ingredients are packaged in a stable way. When I go to Sephora and look at skincare, I just see a lot of nonsense words and bad packaging, honestly. And then the products will be extremely expensive on top of that. Like if you look at a product and it says hydrating, youth boosting, glass skin, milk froth, that means nothing. You do not want to buy skincare that the label has more adjectives than it has nouns. You need stuff that says 10% salicylic acid solutions, um, hyaluronic acids, um, peptides. You need to know what's in it and it should be clear to you what's in it and the quantity of how much of it is in it um, by the label. Like I said, I do love things at Sephora, like face masks, makeup removers, things that like I just need to do a little something, but I'm not relying on them for the overall benefit of my skin. But in terms of spending top dollar in Sephora skincare, I would err on the side of caution and at the very least do a shit ton of research before you invest in it. Number five, last one. I don't know why I did it like that. Um, invest in the basics. Mostly I'm talking about number ones and number twos. If you have no idea what I'm referring to, I did a video recently all about how to stop wasting money on makeup you will not use. And the way that I'm suggesting you do that is to identify what kind of makeup shopper slash wearer slash lifestyle you actually have and then use that to base your shopping choices around. So check that video out if you haven't seen it. But number ones and number twos, if you're not typically hanging out in Sephora, shopping in Sephora all the time, you're pretty happy with your drugstore budget and you just got a little wild hair up your butt to go check out Sephora, be careful because there's so much cool shit in there. There's no denying it. I just think that overall, this is where you go and invest in your first little bit of high end or potentially higher quality beauty staples. So things like foundation, concealer, brow powders, mascara, things like that. And on top of that, the benefit of investing in your first high-end foundation from someplace like Sephora is obviously that you have the ability to go in and play with the formula. You can get color match, but uh, word of the wise, careful with those color matches, you guys. I've heard so many stories about people who go get color match at Sephora three times and get three different matches 
every time they go. The lighting in there is not the best. In my opinion, the best lighting to test a foundation match is natural sunlight. So definitely get samples. I mean, the sale is going on for like two weeks or something. So you have time to suss this situation out before you drop the dollar. But as I said in the beginning of this video, and I think I reiterated at least three times, something being on sale is not a good reason to buy it. If you're not super well-versed or well-educated into high-end makeup, sales associates might be a good way to help you out, but just go in and have a game plan. Go in and have idea of brands that you're gravitating towards. Go in and have an idea of where the gaps in your collection are. Like be smart about it. That 20% off, you know, is not gonna be earth shatteringly good if all you're going in there and buying is one foundation, but it's gonna get your feet in the door and get your feet wet with your high end makeup journey. But just be smart about it. All right guys, it's the end of this. Quick video, quick for me. Uh, I think this is gonna cut under the 20 minute mark, which is bananas. But anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms and I will catch you in the next one.